Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, my name's Julie and I want to help you learn to grow and preserve your own food. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about another way to use your tomatoes. Um, I have a recipe similar to this but it's fermented and it's actually not mine. It's from uh, Stacy off, off grid with Doug and Stacy. But it's a fermented ketchup recipe and I was looking for something that I could can and make shelf stable. So um, I kind of went through and found different recipes people had and kind of combined them to make them my own. But um, today I want to talk to you about something that you can use um, in place of or uh, an elevated ketchup. Uh, once you try this, you'll say goodbye to regular old ketchup uh, ever again. My grandma used to make something that she would can, call, she called chili sauce. Now it was chunky, it wasn't uh, a jam like this tomato jam but it had kind of the same uh, spices in it and so and it smells so good when you're making it so anyway um, I'm gonna help you to show you how I make that today and uh, let's get started all right right here I have a pan um, of my tomatoes that I have diced I have about five or six pounds of tomatoes in here um, I blanched them peeled them I prefer not to have the peels in this recipe. A lot of times I go ahead and include the peels. I don't really care. But today I decided not to since I wanted to end up with a consistency like jam. So I've diced these tomatoes. Um, and when I did, I went ahead and let some of the liquid uh, stay out. I diced them on my cutting board and then just lifted them out. And left behind what liquid I could. Of course there's tons of liquid left in here. So, But we're going to cook that down and make it the consistency of jam. Okay, the first thing we want is fresh grated ginger. You can use powdered ginger if you don't have this. In another video, I show you how to grow ginger, and I actually have this growing out in a pot um, on my back deck. So I've got about a tablespoon of grated ginger. I've got a tablespoon of salt. Never use iodized salt when you're canning. I have a half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Dump all that in there. This is so easy because you just put it all in a pot and we're just going to cook it down. Um, I have a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You guys, this is going to smell so good. I wish you could. we had smell-o-vision or something. I need to add a half a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. You can use, uh, I mean, this is lime juice, fresh squeezed lime juice. If you don't have limes, you can use lemons. Uh, this was three limes that were pretty juicy for me. We're going to add a little acid to it. Okay, um, I'm going to use a tablespoon of crushed red pepper. This is going to be spicy and sweet. Actually, <laughs> my husband and I love this, and so then we try to come up with something to eat so that we can eat some of this. So um, We're going to use two and a half cups of sugar. I use organic natural sugar. And then molasses, just a smidgen of molasses, and if I had to put a measurement on it, I'm going to say a nice tablespoon of molasses. It's going to give it a yummy flavor. Okay, we're going to mix all this up. And we're going to put it on the stove. And we're going to cook this down um, probably about an hour. It could go a little longer. And why I can't say for sure is because it depends on how much juice your tomatoes have and how quickly... Uh, the juice evaporates out as you're cooking it, but oh, this smells so good. It smells spicy. Um, okay, we're going to move this to the stove. Okay, I put the fire under it, um, and we're, I'm going to go ahead and get it up to temp on a pretty high heat, but as this cooks down, we're going to want to watch it because it's going to get sticky and it's not going to have near the liquid in it, so um, I'm going to go ahead and cook it and I'll probably check back with you in about 30 minutes and let you know what we look like. 
Okay guys, we're back. Um, it's been 30 minutes. You can see that this still has quite a lot of water on it. Um, so, but it's important at this point that you keep stirring ever so often and keep a really close eye on it. I'm just using this time to do other things that I have to do in the kitchen, but look at that beautiful color. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, how vibrant red that is, but that is beautiful. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for another 30 minutes and see where we're at after that. And we'll be back. All right, so here we are, and it's been an hour. Um, it's getting pretty thick and a little sticky looking. Kind of glossy, you can see. Um, I'm going to watch it really close now. I'm going to go ahead and set my timer so I can tell you how, how long it actually went. But you can see how thick that is now. And it's going to thicken up as it sets. So we... Uh, I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer though and come back. But this has been an hour and it's thick. Now at this point you will not want to walk away from it because it would be so easy for it to burn on the bottom. So we're going to stay here close and keep stirring. Okay, I went for an additional 10 minutes on this stirring really often because you can see it's getting sticky and thick. And I think we're going to call this good. Look how thick this is. And it will thicken as it cools off in the jar. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, can this up. I will hot water process it for 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to put it in these little quarter pint jars. Because um, I want it to be little individual servings. Or little jars um, that I can give out for people to try. I may do a couple half pints. Um, but anyway, I'll show you when I get finished jarring it all up. All right. These have turned out really beautiful, and you can really tell because it's so glossy. Um, these are really sticky, so we want to be sure we clean our tops very well before we cap these off. This definitely has heat to it. Um, it's hot. It's sweet. It's spicy. It's absolutely delicious. I can picture this with some uh, homemade fries or on a hamburger. This would be delicious. So, after I get these clean and capped off, I'll be back. Alright, so I have nine quarter pints and one half pint in uh, processing in a hot water bath. And as soon as that comes to a rolling boil, I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. I tasted this and you guys have got to try it. It's awesome. So anyway, I'll show them to you as soon as they come out. All right, our 15 minutes is up. Let me turn off my timer. We're going to take these out. and set them on a towel on the counter. Look, oh my gosh, I'm going to show you one how beautiful the red is in these. I don't know if it's going to show up on my camera, but these are so dark and so beautiful. Let's see if you can see that deep, deep red color. That one just sealed as I showed it to you. That is beautiful. This is something that you could eat with cream cheese or goat cheese on a little cracker um, and a little dollop of this would be absolutely delicious. That uh, molasses, you can tell that that was in there and the ginger and the crushed red pepper and then the sweet. Gosh, it all just marries up for a wonderful, wonderful flavor. Um, and I actually will just make some little fries just so we can eat this because it's so delicious. These are popping as fast as I can get them out of here. So it's just another um, idea of something to do with your tomatoes if you have an overabundance like I do. And uh, this didn't make a huge batch but it made enough um, it'll give us something different to try and actually I may do another batch of this down the road. This makes a great gift. So uh, again
again, thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today. <laughs> Hear the popping. If this was helpful to you, if you want to try it, if you like this, they're still popping. Please like, subscribe, and share. It's so easy on your end, and it really does help me a lot. So thanks for joining me in my kitchen today.